Hello, and welcome to Worship at Greenwood. It is wonderful to know that we're connected and that we're community together, even in this virtual space. And I have some good news. We'll be gathering back in person beginning next week. And so it'll be so good to be able to see one another's faces, or at least half of our faces, as we gather for worship. I invite you to follow the link on the video to register your attendance online. And there's also an opportunity for you to continue to support the ministry of the church through online giving. And a link to that is also found with the video. Our music today is going to be provided by Laz, so we are so looking forward to hearing from him. So now let us prepare our hearts and our minds for this time of worship. Our scripture lesson for today is from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 13 through 26. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Happy are those who find wisdom and those who get understanding, for her income is better than silver and her revenue better than gold. She is more precious than jewels, and nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand, in her left hand are riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Those who hold her fast are called happy. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding he established the heavens. By his knowledge the deeps broke open and the clouds dropped down the dew. My child, do not let these escape from your sight. Keep sound wisdom and prudence, and they will be life for your soul and adornment for your neck. Then you will walk on your way securely, and your foot will not stumble. If you sit down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden panic or of the storm that strikes the wicked, for the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Every person needs wisdom to live and to thrive in this world. And every generation needs to work to pass that wisdom along to the next generation. It's care for the soul and it's care for those who follow us in life. The book of Proverbs is an anthology, a collection of writings that convey Israel's wisdom tradition. It's gathered from many spheres of life, many generations, many writers, all collected into this book. And its purpose is to help people become wise and practice godliness in their life. In fact, one of the first lessons of Proverbs is that it takes godly wisdom, the the knowledge of knowing when to listen, to be able to receive wisdom. The instructions that are contained in the book of Proverbs are something that the writers say the faithful community must keep. The book reminds us that wisdom in turn keeps us, holds us in divine care. An interesting thing about the word wisdom in Hebrew, the word hachma, occurs 74 times in the Hebrew scriptures. And that word hachma is a feminine word. And in the book of Proverbs, we hear over and over again how wisdom is being referred to as an embodied presence of God in the midst of the community, calling out to the people, calling them to a life of wisdom and understanding, compassion and care. Wisdom is not some guru that lives off in a hermitage that someone has to seek to be able to find the meaning of life, but rather wisdom is that divine feminine that lives within and among the people, calling to a life of care and faithfulness and listening. What we have found in the midst of these last two years of pandemic life is that there has been a lot revealed to us, a lot of problems with our society, 
a lot of problems with our relationships with one another, a lot of promise, a lot of promises that have not been kept, a lot of systems that need reform. And there have also been lots of lessons that have come our way over these last two years. And I polled a lot of the communities around me about the things that they have gleaned in these last two years so that if we were to go back in time and to redo this, these might be things we would put into practice perhaps earlier. Some of them were humorous and made me chuckle and others were, were deeply moving. So if we were to write our own book of Proverbs for life today, what would be included? You can include those in the comments off to the side of the video and, and let us know what are the things that have bubbled up for you in the midst of these last two years. What has wisdom been calling out to you? Some of the funnier ones that I received on my post on Facebook was cleaning closets is over really overrated. Completely agree. Never, ever, ever read the comments on local news posts on Facebook or any kind of internet site. Another, be sure your microphone and camera are on or off as you intend when you're on Zoom. And buy toilet paper now. If there's another lockdown, somebody will buy all of it. Some of the more meaningful and moving things that I learned from the community around me is that community is essential. And it takes a village for us to care for one another. We need connection. Humans are made for community. We've also learned that trauma is communal. We have seen so many news reports of so many terrible things happening in so many places. It doesn't happen in a vacuum. We are all traumatized by these times. And that's why community is so important. As we hold one another up, as we reach out in care to one another, it makes all a difference. We know that societal systems are in deep need of change. Racism is woven into almost everything. And essential workers are just that, essential, and deserve to be well compensated. We have heard that neighbors are precious to cherish them. Our neighbors, the vulnerable and the least of these, are vitally important. We must allow everyone their dignity. We've also learned that toxic individualism can legitimately be a health risk for the common good. There were some proverbs of hope that bubbled up in our conversation this week. There is always light. God is here too. And every day we can find at least one example of an act of Christian love or human compassion. Some of the Proverbs that I received in my conversation with my community were rather realistic and practical. Control is an illusion. You can make plans, but be prepared to change those plans. Be prepared to pivot at any moment. We also learned that normal wasn't working. We also learned about time, that the secret of life is enjoying the passage of time. Difficult times reveal the truth, both good and bad. Value experiences over things. And we even learned that sometimes procrastination can be good. We've learned that even though we are called to care for one another, we can't help everyone when it looks like they need help, until they are ready to accept help, there is very little that we can do. We can't control someone else's emotions, and we really shouldn't waste our energy 
worrying or stressing about things that are beyond our control. There's also a lot that we learned about our need for rest and self-care. We've learned life is too short to not be happy. Productivity does not mean it has to be perpetual. Doing the best we can in the midst of uncertainty is good enough. Trust the exploration that comes with ambiguity. One that really hit me was stumble upon the divine in the inconvenience, the questions, and in the not finding everything we want. That's like that divine presence of embodied wisdom walking in our midst and calling out to us in the midst of trying to find our way. You have more resilience than you think. Look for small daily wins, small comforts, and small joys. And it's okay to just tread water or float on your back and rest until you see what direction the horizon is and you can continue on your journey. There are so many more that were collected on the posts that I put on Facebook and others that have come by text message and emails. And we could write an entire sermon series on the wisdom that has been gleaned in the midst of pandemic. One of the things that has been interesting about our life together on the internet, in our virtual world, are the trends that have cropped up over the course of time. It began with making sourdough bread, other cooking challenges, dance challenges, more recently Wordle, TV shows and movies that have captured our imagination and our attention, and one that somebody lifted up yesterday that I thought was an important message for all of us to hear, and it's from Disney's Encanto. There's a song that says, the miracle is not some magic that you've got, the miracle is you. It's not some gift, just you. The miracle is you, all of you, all of you. So as we continue on this journey into the next few weeks of the pandemic and in the, the days following as we rediscover what life is like on the other side, God's wisdom calls to us, sometimes embodied in the presence of others around us, and sometimes we are the embodiment of that wisdom that live into our communities, bringing about change and understanding, building community and relationship, and proclaiming God's love. So let us learn that first lesson of Proverbs that we have to listen. Listen for that divine voice that is calling us into greater understanding because in it we will find things that are greater than riches, greater than anything we could hold with our hands. And in fact, it's life. Amen. stars are many, the sun is one, its rays are many, we are many, we are one, we are many, we are one, the rose is one, its petals are many, the tree is one, its branches are many, we are many, we are one, we are one, we are many, we are one. The dance is one, the steps are many, the song is one, the notes are many, love is one, it's four are many 
love is one, its forms are many. are many, water is one, drops are many, air is one, our breaths are many. Air is one, our breaths are many. The earth is one, creatures are many. Life is one, the living are many. We are many, we are one, we are one. We are many, we are one, we are one. We are many, we are one, we are one. We are many, we are. As we enter this time of prayer, I invite you, as you're able, to find as comfortable a position as possible, to relax into God's presence and to take a deep breath and feel the Spirit of God, that life-giving breath, surrounding us as we join our hearts in prayer. God of wisdom, how good it is to be able to gather online, gathering through the means of electrons and wires to enter this time as a community to nourish our faith. When we gather even online, we know that we're not alone on our journey, but that we belong to one another and we belong to you, God. We thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit who teaches us, guides us, and grants us wisdom and faith. We thank you for your gift of wisdom, which helps us to see with your eyes and to love with your heart. Loving God, help us to slow down and listen when wisdom calls to us. Help us to have sensitive hearts and a teachable spirit. Teach us how to better serve one another and your world. Loving God, we pray for your wisdom in our streets and homes and apartment buildings and dorms and neighborhoods. Teach us to seek your truth and embody your compassion with all we meet. Loving God, we pray for your wisdom in our treatment of your earth. Teach us to be better caretakers of our planet and its animals and plants. Loving God, we pray for your wisdom for our world. Teach all of us to show greater tolerance and love to all of our neighbors. Lord, teach us compassion and understanding so that all your children may share this world in peace. We pray for those ill and injured in our community, especially the many in our community dealing with COVID-19. We pray for those who have lost loved ones and are grieving. Loving God, touch them with your spirit reassuring them of your presence and speeding their journeys to wholeness and wellness. And as your children, we unite our hearts and our voices together as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As you go forth into the week ahead, go forth in simplicity. 
find and walk the path that leads to the embodiment of compassion and wisdom, that leads to joy and peace. Welcome the stranger and open your heart to those in need of healing. Be courageous before the forces of hate. Hold and embody the vision of the common good that serves the need of all. Amen.